Developing antisocial personality disorder is a major risk for other things happening to the person, and let me explain why. First, I think it's important to clarify that antisocial personality disorder must start by definition in adolescence. So we have the root by definition in adolescence. And it's preceded by what we call conduct disorder. Uh, there must be evidence of conduct disorder in adolescence to even be considered to have an adult with what is called antisocial personality disorder. And conduct disorder in children or adolescents is characterized by aggressive behavior, which is not just reactive. Somebody hits you and you hit back. You actually look for trouble. You attack people. You disregard their well-being. You bully. You are you're mean to others for the sake of being mean. A lot of these children enjoy being mean. They enjoy torturing animals, um, wrapping up a cat in a bag. They break the expected rules of our social world. We're not supposed to do this because it's damaging to others. There's little respect for other people's well-being. So you know, what can be an ordinary childhood prank, if it's excessive and chronic, becomes a conduct problem. For instance, a kid who will ring somebody's doorbell and run away, if he does it a few times, okay. But this is how you get your kicks, becomes something different, and it's a pattern of behavior now. You don't care if you're disturbing others, and then if anything, that's why you're doing it. Um, it's also breaking important rules, truanting, lying, lying excessively about what you've done, conning people, manipulating people for your own gain. That's what we mean. So in adulthood, this has major repercussions because other people depend on you, such as children, co-workers, and you can't be trusted because you really don't care about what happens to them. You care about your own gain. So you may steal, you may connive, you may also con, um, and you get into physical fights because you get angry if somebody doesn't agree with you or challenges you or picks on you. You're used to being the tough one, and other people who interfere with that become a challenge to you. And there's this impulsivity, too, where the person overreacts to what you can call provocation. Yes. There are very serious consequences to antisocial personality disorder. And the rate of hospitalization for in psychiatric hospitalizations is much higher. And the rate of divorce ends up much higher. And employment is compromised because you're irresponsible. So even if you're competent, you get fired. All aspects of your life can become negatively affected. It's not good for you. And others. ADHD, part of ADHD is excessive impulsivity. We're all impulsive at times. You know, we eat what we know we shouldn't eat because we really want it and we want it now. We spend money in a way that's not very wise, but not to the point where it creates serious problems. But these children do. Their judgment is very poor. If they, want, if they want something, they have to have it. And so they can resist anything but temptation, and that ends up causing them to do antisocial things. You're with other kids who uh, think it's, uh, you know, it's fun to go and uh, enter a building and steal something so that you can party afterwards. Sure, you know, that sounds good. So the impulsivity, I think, is what drives the development of these misbehaviors, and then they become solidified. And then even if when you no longer have ADHD, you have developed a pattern of behavior, which is you now. It's what you do, and that has very serious consequences. Well, parents are really challenged. Um, because by the time a child develops serious conduct problems, the child has devalued the parental values if the parents don't have it, and most of them do not. So it's really important to get 
professional help at that point. I think what's also helpful for parents is not to be overly critical or reject the person because that just drives youngsters away even further and what you want to do is to enable them to develop more consideration and empathy and caring. I don't know that there's any easy way of doing that but we do know that rejection and criticism works against you. But it's really hard if you're a parent to know how to to limit this sort of behavior. And I think there are programs that are helpful, that have been shown to be helpful, and parents should avail themselves of expert help. Not everyone's an expert in this. There are some, not too many, but and the school can help too. Uh, you develop an alliance with other authority sources and you try to redirect the child's behavior. I'm not saying it's easy and I'm not saying it always succeeds, but it has to be tried. What's really critical is to have consistent and rational limits and forcing curfews and forcing doing your work, that this is the youngster's job and even rewarding the youngster for doing it, just as you get paid for a job, that being easy on the misbehaviors is not the way to go. But doesn't mean that you have to be mean-spirited about it, but you have to be firm and clear about the fact that this is unacceptable behavior and that it has consequences. Most parents will need, will need help, professional help, to be able to do this wisely.